That went too far. All right. You guys, we got a mailbag. In a mailbag, lots of mailbags included in that. Yeah. This one. Oh, from Frederick, Maryland. I know where that is. You do? Have you been there? Uh-huh. Nice. Sure do. This is from Tim. Again. Tim. Again. Dear Emily, Matt, and Rich. Hello, this is from Tim again. Thank you so much for reading my letter. I'm happy you guys liked the movies I picked last time, and I'm glad you agree that they are underrated, too. Another question I have is, which movies do you think best represent films being made, or just show Hollywood in general, from certain decades? I have a few listed here, and I'm also adding more movies that I consider underrated and would like to hear your opinions on any of them. So he's got a list of ten here. Number one, Fade to Black, 1980. Oh, that's a good one. Number two, Mazes and Monsters with Tom Hanks. Never seen it. Number three, Anonymous Rex. Never seen it. Number no. four, Tucker, The Man and His Dream. Very good movie. I've Coppola. Seen any of these. Number five, Without Warning. Number six, Fortune Thief! Fortune Thief! Fortune Thief! Number seven, The Sate from 1997. Number eight, Rockstar. Number nine, American Movie. Number 10, The Comic from 1969. Okay, I think all of these are uh, underrated because I haven't seen haven't like 85 of them. I'm a little confused them. because I wouldn't say that all of these represent Hollywood or I show them in general. I think he was doing a but... mix of like some of them and then some he just thinks are underrated. Okay, okay. That's the end of the letter. Yeah. Do you have any that you think? Um, that represent that movie, like movies being made? Yeah. I mean, obviously, we got Boogie Nights. No. I wrote, I wrote some that I first came to mind. Fellini's Eight and a Half. It's classic. I mentioned this last episode. I don't know if it was like being filmed or if it was just while we were talking, but I just watched Ryan Murphy's feud with Jessica Lange and Susan Sarandon about the making of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane and mm -hmm. the feud between those two, Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. And it is so, so good. I loved it so much. So that also brings me to like Mommy Dearest. Also put down Aviator. Mm, oh, that's a good choice. Because that's great. Yeah. This made me think of the Truffaut movie Day for Night, which is one of the few mm, good mm -hmm. movies about making movies. Underrated. That, what does that make me think of in did, terms of underrated did you watch, films? Uh, did you see Babylon? The I one that just did, came out? I did unfortunately see that movie. Did yes. you like any of it? No. No. Not a, it was not a so, wit. It was so much, but what that made me, when you were like, movies about Hollywood making movies, obviously, I thought about what Babylon. I Hail Caesar, I thought was cute. That was funny. That, that's got something else going would, on. Would that it were, baby. Would that it were so simple. Yes. Uh, also, that movie is what made me fall in love with Channing Tatum. That's the one? Yeah, that is the one. Okay. Because before I was like, yeah, he's like a hunk or whatever. He's kind of funny. But this, I was just like, he's so goddamn charming. And his dancing? Yeah. I mean. I enjoyed that film a lot. That was a good one. That's a good choice. Yeah. You go. Uh, well, I did. Oh, try. thanks for your letter, Tim, by the way. Oh, me go for the next letter. Yeah, you go. All right. Thank you, Tim, so much. Okay, we got another cute one from Sophia and her cat Maverick. Oh, really? Yeah. Love those guys. They're so great. And they got us a gift card <gasps> to, I'm saying they like her cat helped her, Well. Uh, to this, uh, it's like a bubble tea place downtown. Oh, cool. So either we are going to take a field trip or I'll pick some up for us and I'll bring them to the next. Great. Uh, Whatever we do here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I looked Always good like stationery. Yeah, what the heck? Lovely pen personship. All right, I, lo I, I previewed this letter and I love it. So I'm, I'm excited to read it out loud. <clears throat> Dear Viva Physical Media, once again, thanks for answering my previous question. A while ago, I was doing a marathon of VHS over the internet for my friends to play in the background while working or whatnot. I had them vote on what movie should come next. Gen Z loves Columbo. We stand Peter Falk. Hell yeah. He was goaded to the gods. Mm. Mikey and Nikki rips, mm -hmm. slaps, and rocks the house. Shout out to Elaine May, a deeply underrated filmmaker. So everyone voted for the cheap detective. Within 10 minutes, literally everyone left. Oh. I told them it wasn't very good. It caused the creation of cinema score. Oh well. Have any of you had a group watch or movie trip with friends or others go horribly wrong? Thank you, Sophia. I love your letters. Great question. Keep them coming. Uh, Peter, Peter Fox is goaded to the gods. That's just, there's never been anything more true than that. <laughs> I have never had a movie party go wrong. 
I haven't either, and I think it, it's probably because we know who to invite to these things. Yeah, and we also the, the kinds of people that we're that we have around are just gonna, you know. Also, my movie parties, our movie parties, tend to be the chilly nights. Yeah, that's true. And those are not about is the movie good. That's a yeah. That's like everyone kind of brings in their own thing, and yeah. everyone has a level of expectation. I always do a movie thing near Halloween where I theme it out. And that worked well this past October. That was fun. Yeah, what did I do? This Hellraiser past? and Nightbreed. I did. And then the year before, I did the two Canadian rock. Yes, rock, rock, and, roll nightmare. rock and Roll Nightmare. And then what was the other one you did? Another one. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But that was fun. But one year, we played all the Scream movies. And all of them. Four of them at the time. Back to back to back. And people came and went during that. But it's like when, when people leave during that kind of thing, I'm like, I don't expect you to sure. stay here for eight hours, you know, unless you're like really committed to it. So I, I do feel like it's you got to you suss out the audience first. Or if I do invite someone who I think isn't going to love it, I don't expect them to stay for it, I guess. Sure. You know, when we do our chili nights, the goal is not to find the best movies. The, the goal is to shoot the shit and eat chili and hang see out. See some weird. See some weird stuff. And, Be able to talk. And, and if if the movie is successful enough at, at capturing our attention so that we stop talking to each yeah. other and watch the movie, that's... Oh, you that's know what's the, cool? That's I had an interesting movie party a couple nights ago. Well, my sister wasn't there, but my brother came up. My sister was at like band practice or whatever, but my brother came up and I ended up getting my mom and my dad and my brother to all watch Piranha 3D with me in the living room of my family's home. <laughs> There's so many boobs. <laughs> There's so many fucking boobs, wow. but that movie is very, very fun. That's a fun movie. A yeah. lot of fun. Did not think my mom and dad were going to stay through the whole movie. I thought it was just going to be a me and my brother thing. It was very funny. And that went right when I thought it could have gone wrong. So we've been lucky, I guess. Yeah. Last m movie party I remember even having that I put on was, was Titanic Panic when we watched Titanic oh, and Ate Pizza. that was so long ago. I know. It was like five, six years ago. Cool. Well, thank you again, Sophia. We got a couple of electronic mailbags, which we love. Viva at Scarecrow.com if you want to send us one of those. If you want to send us a normal mail, 5030 Roosevelt Way, Northeast Seattle, Washington, 98105. This one's from Chris Rotondo. Hello, Viva gang. My name is Chris, and I'm a longtime viewer, first-time caller. I'm reaching out from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Hello. You guys are from Pennsylvania. Not really, but I mean, I, I spent a lot of time I mean, there. He I is. around. Wait, where are you from? I thought you were all... I was born in Baltimore, oh, but okay. I spent a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Got it. The zombie capital of the world, where unfortunately there's not a single video store left in sight. I've thoroughly enjoyed each episode and have gotten many film suggestions from you all. One suggestion that I finally took upon myself is to watch the one and only Bingo. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Love to hear it. Having never seen it, I decided to put it on one night to watch with my girlfriend. I love that this that we are making and Kevin's not here right now he's coming a little bit later we're making he's bingo love, fans is what he's we're gonna doing. love to hear this I decided to put it on one night to watch with my girlfriend we all thought the movie was hilarious and batshit in a way we've never seen from a family film correct we have family from Wisconsin and we can confirm that the craziness of Packers fandom in the movie is very much real <laughs> the biggest fan of the movie in our household was our corgi named Winnie <laughs> who just recently turned one I watched a ton of films, and Winnie is never faced by them unless a dog is barking in the film. Then he barks uncontrollably. For some reason, though, not only did Winnie not bark during Bingo, he was enthralled and watched nearly the whole movie. I have never seen him like that during a movie, but needless to say, he enjoyed it. Thank you again for the recommendation. <laughs> I was also curious to hear in the last episode that there was a Scarecrow movie guide, so I tracked down a copy on eBay for a couple of bucks. Glad to see there's some. That's worth a couple of bucks. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to digging into this time capsule of Scarecrow history. Winnie seems to be enjoying it so far as well. Lastly, a few months back, I ordered a copy of David Cronenberg's classic Dead Ringers on Laserdisc from the Criterion Collection through eBay. Upon opening it, I was surprised to see that this edition was once a part of the Scarecrow library. Okay. And it even still has a sticker attached. I thought it was pretty cool to have something that was once a part of Scarecrow Library. Thank you again for continuing the show through the pandemic and beyond, and thank you again for all of the recommendations. I hope to make it to Seattle in the near future. When I do, I'll definitely stop by the store. Sincerely, Chris. That was great. Beautiful. Thank you, Chris. Our next letter is from Christopher Pearson, who's written to us before. He was the guy that wrote us a letter in the last episode of the one before about like how he worked at a Safeway and he had a coworker who- He was like lending him gummo, Lending him right? gummo, yeah. They were having some, some difficulties interacting, meshing of the minds. Yes. So Christopher said, Dear Viva Physical Media, 
Just wanted to reach out and say thank you for reading my emails on your show. There was definitely a lot to unpack with that first email, so thank you for powering through it and reading it anyway with uh, such passion. Oh, we loved passion. unpacking it. We do that. Yeah. Matt, I took your advice to heart uh, about spreading the good gospel of weird and absurd films, but more importantly, not isolating yourself as a movie guy in a group of non-movie people. The more I reflect on that statement, I'm reminded of past moments where I definitely isolated myself as the movie guy without even realizing it. Like the time in middle school when I got up from my seat and flipped my desk because my classmate didn't know who Bill Murray was and hadn't seen Ghostbusters, fucking... which was the literal tipping point. I love this so much. I mean, good job. <laughs> In middle school, he's like 13, just yeah. like, you don't know who Bill fucking Murray is? <laughs> good job. I think I've calmed down since then, hopefully. I do stop myself from accusing people of living under rocks when I hear that they haven't seen a popular film, so I guess that's a sign of improvement. Yeah, I think so. But the most common situation I find myself in is when I try to introduce a new film to non-movie people, like my family, and they end up not liking it because it's too weird. My movie selections now get vetoed from movie night because of my most recent picks, which were Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou, a personal favorite. Strange Brew, The Beach okay. Bum, Being John Malkovich, uh, yeah. and Raw from 2016. Uh, hell yeah. French veterinary school seems... A little intense. Yeah. Have either of you encountered this problem when picking out a movie for a group of people? Do you try to read the room before making a pick, or do you just put something on, let it ride, and hope for the best? This is kind of a similar question this to what is, we just it answered. It goes really well with Sophia's question. Yeah, yeah, sure. it does. It's it the does. Same thing. Everyone's journey through cinema is different. It is easy to dissect someone else's list of favorite films and point out what you don't like about it, but it takes time and dedication to really read a film and figure out what makes it special. I'm happy to have been exposed to great films in my lifetime, so it may help me further understand the new doors of cinema that await me. Mm. Thank you for reading. Christopher Pearson, a.k.a. The Cinema Stand. P.S. We're only halfway through. I know. But you want to tackle the first question? You want to tackle the first question? Does, okay, so let's can, do like, that. Yeah, let's do that. It. Let's do that. Okay, so that kind of ties into Sophia's like group watch gone wrong question. Uh -huh. I, I kind of read the room a little bit. I'm not gonna sit down with like my fam, even though I did sit down with my family and put on Piranha 3D. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna sit down with my family and put on Inland Empire or something like that, that I know will not have a fucking chance. You kind of have to pick and choose. Are you gonna like challenge someone a little bit because mm -hmm. you know the payoff is gonna be funny? I have a younger sister, she's 16. I love showing her like kind of fucked up shit and like weird stuff mm -hmm. and she's open to it, but I know she's open to it. It's not like I'm forcing her to watch weird stuff, you know? It's, right. I think it's all about who, who you've got in your corner. I think that's true, yeah. I don't, this is a thing that I don't do. Yeah. Like I don't uh, have movie parties with my friends. It's right. just not that kind of thing. Uh, when I show a movie to someone, it's almost never my choice. It's all like if I'm with a friend and they mention that they haven't seen something, I'll be like, oh, let's go watch that. Yeah. Um, or if I'm like with a romantic partner, I usually let them pick the movie because I've seen so much stuff and maybe they haven't. So yeah. if there's something they want to watch, I will watch that with it. Or, or, yeah. or if they're like, oh, I've never seen X famous thing to me, Oh, come over, we'll yeah. watch that. I'm also a huge fan of going to the movies by myself because I don't care. Same. I won't have to worry about being like, is someone going to like this? Is someone not? Yeah. I feel like it's just being confident with stuff and then just knowing when you don't want to waste someone's time. And also being being comfortable with them, like like introducing something to someone and having them hate it and you just have to deal with that. Yeah, you for know? sure. Because one of the things that happens to me, at least, because, you know, and, and maybe it happens to you guys too, because you know, we all watch a lot of stuff. And because of what we do for a living, you've kind of got to develop this this thick skin where somebody completely disagrees with something that you really love or, or you vice versa. You just kind of got to go like, oh, that's too bad. Or, Honestly, oh, like, what did you like about that? I don't have the energy. I know. I don't care. I just don't care. To like argue with someone. Yeah. Also, a big thing that changed for me a long time ago was... Uh, when when you find out someone hasn't seen something that you might think is an obvious pick, get fucking stoked for them. Yeah. Be like, oh my god. I'm so excited for Instead you to check like, that out for the first time. Instead of like, you haven't seen that, be like, oh my god, you haven't seen that. This is so exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for you to see this for the first time. Like, do you want to, you know, do you want to watch, watch that it, with me? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to hear a fun digression about showing a movie to somebody for the a famous movie or something for the first yeah. time? Yes, I do. So a long time ago, I was dating this woman, and uh, she had never seen Alien. Okay. And so we watched, this is my, my favorite scary movie of all time, mm. Alien. We watched Alien, and you know, there's the scene where the alien pops out of John Hurt's chest and runs away. And for the next like 15 minutes of the movie, she was like, 
who's it going to come out of next? Oh my God, you told me this. <laughs> and I, and I, I will love always that treasure her. that. Yeah, I know exactly. Like, you I love that. that. She her. had no idea what was going to happen. It was great. And for all you people out there who watch movies and are just like fooled by every twist, like me, when I watch a movie for the first time, <laughs> good for you. A, a twist will always give me good for you. Good for good you. Good for her. Good, good for, for you. P.S. Emily, a couple episodes back, you picked a film for your dysfunctional family category. I would like to add a film to that list. I'd pick The Ref from 1994. I have not seen this. He says, I know it's more of a Christmas movie, but whatever. I We're here Christmas. now. He's right. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah. Oh, and for good DVD commentaries, this is Ooh, a question yeah. we had a few episodes back, too. Tropic Thunder. Ooh. Robert Downey Jr. stays in character through the whole thing. Oh, That's funny. He's right. Being John Malkovich. Probably the weirdest commentary I've heard. It's mostly Michelle Gondry, not Spike Jones, commenting on certain scenes. I feel like they cut out most of his commentary because it was mostly speculation and not anything factual about the film. He spends a majority of the commentary ogling over the women in the movie, then runs out of shit to say, so he calls up Spike Jones and has him fill in the rest over speakerphone. Oh my god. Entertaining but very bizarre. Yes. His vote for the worst commentary is, though you aforementioned, Life Aquatic. They recorded the commentary where Wes Anderson and Noah Baumbach wrote the screenplay, which was a bar and grill of some kind. So throughout the whole commentary, you hear restaurant murmurs in the background, people yeah. backing their chairs out against the floor. Someone drops and breaks a glass at some I point. I want to be at a bar and grill with Noah Baumbach and Wes Anderson yes, and their significant others. I disagree that this is a bad commentary. I really like that aspect of it. I thought it was cool. He says, also, I nominate Marry Me from 2022 as a loser. Against any contender in the Raunch versus Rom challenge, <laughs> that's too bad. I liked Marry Me. Oh, I, thought it was cute. I haven't seen that's it. That's the J-Lo Owen that's Wilson, Wilson one. one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I enjoyed it. And for my honorable mention this week, The Baby, 1973. I've seen it. Would love to hear you guys' review of this one. That movie's nuts. I've seen it. It's nuts. It's weird. I think I saw it. It was one of those movies for a while. I moved back home with my parents, and it was when it was right before my brother moved out. So he was like 19, and I was working here, and he would work at uh, Whole Foods, so I'd go and pick him up after work. We'd go to like Taco Bell. And go back Sounds home great. and we'd smoke, watch the baby. smoke weed and watch any weird shit that I picked up. This is when I watched, like, It's Alive. Mm -hmm. It's when I watched Basket Case. The baby was one of these. Don't really remember much about it other than that it was an odd one. That is the end of the letter. Great letter, Christopher. Thank you very much. Great letter. One more. Yep, you can read the next one. You want one. me to read it too? You can From go. Daniel Hickey? Yeah. Hello, Matt and Emily and Kevin and Richard and all. Mm. And Sandra. <laughs> I was so happy with your amazing reply for cat movies to watch and feedback on pet name spellings. Oh, yeah. This person has written to us before, yes. And, of course, constantly getting great movie recos from you. I just watched Yokai Monsters 100 Monsters based on one of the episodes, and it was a blast. So fun. This month, I have been better than normal supporting our amazing local small cinemas like The Beacon and The Grand Illusion. Fuck yeah. Great job. Let's go. What are the top films that you have not had a chance to see with a live audience in a movie theater yet that you would love to share with an audience? and that you think your own viewing would be enhanced by watching with others, big or small. Still sad about the Cinerama, but grateful I was able to see movies like 2001 or Brazil or The Thing and Lawrence of Arabia and so many others with an audience there and grateful yes. for our indie cinema houses. Thanks for everything, even making my watch list impossibly long, from Dan and Charlie, Silky, and Stella, our preferred cat spellings. Love it, love it. P.S. Also, Seattle Horror and Filmmakers is having a hang with beer at Two Fingers Social on Saturday, February the 25th, oh. which is... Today. This Saturday. Saturday. For you and any other local film lovers and makers, just to meet and greet, you are always invited. Thank you. Next time you do this, Daniel Hickey, like, keep us updated, or maybe I'll find you guys on Instagram or something. I might already be following you. And yeah. Maybe we'll, we'll do a, a period we'll at the one March of one. the yeah. Seattle Horror Filmmakers meet and greets. Top so. films you have not had a chance to see with a live audience in a movie theater yet. I feel lucky that I've seen a lot of good ones on on, on the big screen. A lot at Cinerama 2 RIP. But I would love to see... Early Final Destination movies with the crowd, probably two through four, <laughs> because I think it would be a lot of fun to see those deaths on screen. Mm -hmm. I did not see those when it came out uh, in theaters. Would love to see La Dolce Vita on the big screen. I think I would just weep through the whole thing. And I am constantly nagging Tommy to show Southland Tales, so that's in the works. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> a movie I did see in an audience, in a theater with an audience, but it was a very small audience. I had trouble thinking of, of anything that I like was dying to see, that, that I'd never haven't. seen yeah. with, a, with a, an audience before, you know, like, or that I haven't had a chance to see in a rep. There weren't a whole lot of options. But it did make me think of how, just a couple weeks ago, I went to see Titanic, because they just re-released Titanic. Yeah, you guys, I you backed bailed. out of the last second. I don't want to talk about well, it. Well, you missed out. <laughs> 
Because I, I mean, I have seen it on the big screen before, though. Yes, so have I. I. I saw it on the big screen when it came out in 1987. I saw it like four times in the theater. I loved it then, but I've only ever seen it on video since then. Yeah. And was it, you, if you'd asked me before that, like, do you need to see this on the big screen? I would have been like, well, probably. I mean, it's just a movie. You could see it, you know, experience it however you can. No, you're still on the big screen. And then I went and saw it in the theater again, and I was just completely nuked by it. Like, I was, uh, I, I couldn't believe how staggeringly great it was yeah. to just sort of be captivated in that way. It's and a so big movie. It is a big movie, but it's more just like being put in a position where there are zero distractions. You know, it's not necessarily about the, the size of the screen or experiencing it in an audience with other people. Cause I mean, I mean that, that did have an, its own element at, yeah. at that screening, but mostly it was just like really being forced to sit down and focus on the one thing. Yeah. Although I will say this, at that screening, it was me and Kevin and Will we were the only dudes in the theater. It was all women. <laughs> they loved and it. they could not, like, I would suggest, I, I would speculate that most of them Didn't had either it. never seen it in a theater before or, or were too young to have seen it in a theater when yeah. it came out. And then afterwards, like, some girls were dressed up and they made Kevin, like, take their pictures I, and I stuff. Remember, yeah. It was great. It was like, like killer movie experience yeah. like, I didn't I didn't see it when it first came out because I was a little too young but I saw it about 10 years ago they did have a, a mm -hmm. re, last time a they theater released it. thing yeah. that I did go and see so that's why I didn't feel too bad about missing it this time top yeah. 10 of all time movie experiences for me seeing that like better than seeing it when it came out that's it uh yeah that's that's all for the mailbag if you guys want to email us or write us a letter ask us any questions about our own movie tastes or anything about scarecrow video or give us recommendations, send us photos of your animals. It's literally whatever relevant. You, you guys know Anything. the deal. Yeah. Uh, Viva at scarecrow.com or uh, scarecrow video 5030 Roosevelt Way, Northeast Seattle, Washington 90105. Or you can come by the store and drop off a letter. Yeah, we love it. Cool. Mailbag. Miss New Booty.